Russia's ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, 95% of them are ready to go at all times. 95% of Russia's ICBMs are ready to go. They are at constant combat readiness. Takes them about three and a half minutes to get their ICBMs in the air. Within three and a half minutes, they could launch a ton of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, Putin happens to be, it's reported, down in his bunker uh, control center. His control center down in a bunker. By the way, did you know that Russia is at one of the highest levels? We have DEFCON, you know, the different levels that we would go to. Russia is at one of the highest levels of nuclear war readiness. Uh, did you know that, I guess we have, I think, I think I heard Price say today 400 ICBMs. I'll ask him about that. Russia has uh, way more than us, maybe as many as six times more, uh, Peter Pry reported, if they are cheating as they are known to do on the treaties. We'll ask him about that. And then we have our bombers, and I guess he reported that our air bombers take about three days to ready. So about three days to get ready. So if you think we're just going to win this war with Russia, if we get into World War III with them, uh, like that, as so many people in the military have been brainwashed to believe, as well as the public, you don't know the facts. All right, joining me now is Dr. Peter Vincent Pry, former CIA analyst, uh, chief of staff of the EMP Congressional Commission, and head of the EMP Task Force. He's author of numerous books. His latest is a hardcover, Blackout Warfare. He's written many others. If you want to get his great, excellent books, which, by the way, many of the things he wrote about years ago are unfolding in front of you right now. You can get his books by just simply going to Amazon and typing in Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. I want to uh, mention a few bullet points tonight. Here's something as I, correct me if I mis misinterpreted what you were saying today, that uh, Russia's ICBMs are 95% ready to go all the time. True or false? Yes. At least 95%. The readiness rate is probably higher than that. Uh, three and a half minutes, they could launch a ton of their ICBMs within three and a half minutes. True or false? Yes. Yes, they could launch their whole ICBM force in about three and a half minutes. Uh, they are at constant combat readiness. True or false? Yes, all their nuclear forces are on constant combat readiness all the time. Putin is in a bunker in his control center. True or false? Yes. Uh, he's in one of, one of we don't know which one, you know, but there are hundreds of these deep underground facilities that are vast. They're hundreds of meters under solid granite. They're pervious to nuclear attack. And they're capable, some of them are capable of accommodating up to 30,000 of Russia's military and political elites. Okay, now make sure I got this one right. When you were talking, I was taking notes. The U.S. has 400 ICBMs. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Intercontinental so ballistic ahead. missiles. Half of yeah. Russia, and met Russia may have six times more based on the cheating on the treaties that we entered with them. They cheated and kept going. So they may actually have six times more than we do inter, in, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Well, uh, ICBM warheads, yes, in terms of the numbers of weapons. We, we, had, uh, we have no more than 400 warheads on our ICBMs. They have uh, multiple warhead missiles, and if they're cheating on the New START Treaty, which I think they are, uh, they could have as many as six times as many. If they're not cheating on the New START Treaty, they have at least twice as many. Now, for us, again, correct me if I misunderstood you today, our ICBMs and intercontinental ballistic missiles, many of them are on subs, but those subs have to get out to sea to get close to Russia so we can shoot them off. So whereas they can just launch, we've got to get our subs out to sea and close to Russia. Well, okay, uh, this is a... Uh you have a little misunderstanding there. Uh, our submarines don't have intercontinental ballistic missiles on them. They have intermediate-range ballistic missiles. Oh, uh, now explain the difference. Which, right, uh, whereas the Russian submarines do carry intercontinental-range missiles. So uh, the Russian ICBM force is not limited to their silo-based ICBMs, as, as is ours. You know, uh, the only intercontinental missiles we have are the Minuteman three. ICBMs, which are, there's 400 of them. But Russia, in addition to having land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles, it has deliberately designed submarines to carry intercontinental ballistic missiles, too. You know, this, and, and they have the command and control apparatus set up so that even when their submarines are at port, they could be launched, just 
like land-based ICBMs and strike the United States from their ports. And ours are inter intermediate missiles, which I guess would make sense because if, if you had ICBMs, you wouldn't have to go out to sea and get close to Russia. So that would absolutely make sense. So you're saying what we have is intermediate missiles. What, what's the range on those? We, are, we have to send our submarines out to sea if we're going to attack Russia, okay? But they don't have to send their submarines out to sea if they want to attack us. Yes, And they wow. did that because the Russians are very paranoid. They believe in making a surprise nuclear attack if there's a nuclear war. And they think we would do that, too, that we would try to make a surprise nuclear attack. So they want to have the capability to launch their ICBMs. How about their, their, their submarine missiles, you know, on short notice, uh, uh, to either to respond to a surprise attack that we're making or to make a surprise attack themselves. So they have many more intercontinental ballistic missiles. They have a much larger number of warheads that they can throw at us on a very on very short notice. Whereas most of our weapons have to be what's called generated or mobilized. You know, the submarines at port you can't just send them out to sea. You know, they're, they're, we don't they can't launch from port. They're not manned normally when they're in port. You have to call the sailors back to man the submarines you have to have food on the submarines they have to have been maintenance uh, maintenance before you can send them to sea that takes time and uh and then they of course they have to go out to sea to reach uh positions where they can where they can launch their uh missiles assuming they're not destroyed while they're in port uh, we we do always have on patrol about a third of the submarine force you know which is about four submarines you know two in the atlantic two in the pacific uh, you know, which is a relatively, you know, uh, uh, sm uh, a small force compared to what we used to have in the Cold War. I mean, we used to have many more submarines on station during the co uh, during the Cold War. But yes, uh, but yeah, that's so. That's that's the point. You have to send the submarines to see. Point is, we're not ready as ready as the Russians are on a day to day basis. Uh, uh, you know, and that's and I was making those points because. I'm not sure most people understand that the Russians have gone to, to uh, a nuclear alert. You know, the Putin is in one of his underground facilities. He's put his nuclear forces on alert. And, and that matters a lot, you know, because uh, they don't even have to mobilize their forces. You know, uh, he has enough ICBMs to basically win a nuclear war in three and a half, you know, in, in 30 minutes just by launching his ICBM force. He doesn't have to send his submarines to sea. The bomber force is in Russia is very small. You know, they haven't put, a, 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 you know, a lot of their weapons on bombers. Mostly it's on intercontinental ballistic missiles, land-based and on their, on their submarines. Whereas we rely a lot more heavily on our submarines, which have to be, which, which have to be sent to sea, generated, and on our bombers. And it takes even longer to get a, uh, the bombers ready. It takes three days to get the bombers ready. Russia practiced an attack on, was it F Finland and some other nations? Well, not on Finland. What they did is they, uh, just before the, uh, uh, the, they invaded Ukraine, uh, they, ha they, they had what they called a strategic, uh, a, a, a strategic nuclear forces exercise. Okay. And, uh, uh, and it was really an exercise of, uh, all nuclear forces, tactical and strategic. And uh, it was unusual because they dropped their reentry vehicles. They made strikes, simulated nuclear strikes, simulated, not actual nuclear strikes, but simulated nuclear strikes by dropping reentry vehicles that, that didn't have nuclear weapons in them uh, into the Arctic Ocean. So they weren't hitting the NATO, NATO territory, but they were going into the Arctic Ocean, you know, close enough to the NATO territory so it was uncomfortable 